out one prayer right now. I've got a little child we normally see in the church every Sunday morning, and she's not here today. Her daddy's got her. I think that's little Cambry Pearl. She's not feeling great, is she? Urgent care. What's up with her? Headaches and sore throat. And headaches been lingering. So we've got to pray for little Cambry. She's had a up and down 2022, to be honest. I didn't mention one last week. We had it in the bulletin, but I didn't bring it up. Uh, Maurice Squeak Payton passed away a little over a week ago. and He was... Uh, family with Leland Payton, our newest member here at the church, and of course Travel Mercies for Leland, they'll be coming back from their cruise here uh, I think today, either today or tomorrow, but prayers for the family of Squeak Payton. You also see on there Matthew Meyer, this is a young man, very young man, who passed away this past week locally, and uh, a lot of folks around here knew Matthew, and uh, his loss was sudden, so he's listed as well in our bulletin. And I'll open it up to you all for prayer needs or praises, too. Paul. You know, I saw on Facebook a little bit of William Mahoney. Uh, it's been diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to go to Brown Cancer Center. I'm supposed to get more updates on how to bear and what they can do. Where does he live at? Uh, Turner Station. Up around here. Oh yeah. yeah There's lots of Mahoney's here. Lots yeah. of Mahoney's right outside this window. Yeah, okay. Right right Who else today? Miss White. Hey, Rankin. She's from Turner Station. She passed away. Okay. We mentioned the Traveler Mercies for uh, Leland. We also, you might notice that Barb and Jean are not here. They have traveled to Iowa to be at Barb's uh, class reunion. Be back, what, tomorrow, Tuesday, somewhere in there? Uh, in the wee hours of the morning. Oh, so, oh gosh. Okay, coming back tonight late. So, prayers they can yeah. handle that drive. That's a long drive. Paula? See that on Facebook. Yeah. So I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, all at once and had all of his health issues too, so been rough. Diane. Pray that Juan's back is better. Yeah, Juan is back. If you notice, she's walking kind of gingerly. She's uh, not been feeling good at all with her back. Andrea? Well, 
Well, we know all about water on Sunday mornings. Ron and Brenda last week, so Stephanie Decker this week, but they were able to get to the ball game. Maybe she'll be able to get to the ball game. All right, good deal. So prayers that they get that taken care of. That is one of the most frustrating and infuriating things is to wake up to water. And it usually is on a Sunday. Go ahead, hear it. That's all that I had on the Facebook that I can see. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to look to uh, Jack, our cousin Jack Brown. He mm -hmm. has a blood clot in both lungs and in his leg. He's in the hospital. He's home now. So just pray for that feeling. Okay. Jack Brown, who. Um, Cousin Harriet, cousin, I guess that would be to Jeannie and Bobby and Trisha and keep on going on down the line here. Margaret's son. Margaret's been in this church several times. Anyone else today? sure there we know that some folks do not understand why they're there and it's very sad sure I did receive a text a uh, half hour hour ago from Linda Popiak she's uh, feeling poorly Steve has been feeling real poorly as you know that she's kind of run down so she asked for prayers for them to get back on their feet both of them her to be able to take care of him better um, as he continues to have struggles he has an appointment coming up this week to look further about what's going on with him. He needs our prayers, for sure. And he he told me uh, two days ago, hope to be at church Sunday, and that's the way he is. It's been a while since he's been able to. Any others today? I'll offer one more um, as a prayer need and also as kind of an announcement. You all do know, most of you know, that the walk to Emmaus happens this coming week from Thursday to Sunday for men and just would ask for prayers for that for all the men that are attending it. I have a very fulfilling and lightening uh, weekend and for those of us that are volunteers to do the same. It's a big undertaking. There will be probably a, close to 60 men down there at the Flagey Center down Dixie Highway and that's a lot of people. And Ladies, I know we're guys and we're not very smart, so I pray that we'll be able to handle it too. But just that it's a great weekend. The ladies, the Mayus Walk will be at the end of October. Right, so I did put out a one call now um, message to everyone that's part of the Emmaus community to help with uh, a certain item that we collect before the weekend. If you don't know what I'm talking about, come see me, come see Harriet, or anyone else that's Emmaus, they know what we're talking about. But we'd like to be able to collect that by Wednesday, if at all possible. Otherwise, it will be awful hard. Yeah. So, see us, and that can be by text, by email, uh, by paper, you name it. Let's pray. <clears throat> We do pray this morning for those that have been mentioned, for the family of Ann Rankin, family of Matthew Meyer, family of Squeak Payton, and Shane Talent and his family as he's mourning the loss of a grandparent who's lost several grandparents this past year. Pray for Wanda Pullman in her back. Steve Popiak with all of his concerns right now. Jack Brown with blood clots. Stephanie Decker with uh, water leak. William Mahoney, cancer diagnosis. Joy Holder with this lesion on her lung. And then little Cambry that's feeling uh, too many headaches and just not feeling good at all. Maybe with uh, men that are preparing to go on the Emmaus Walk this week and all the women that help make that happen too and the kids uh, of those men that will be on the weekend. 
Let it be a wonderful time, spiritually uplifting for all that go. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. We have our celebrations. Next Sunday you'll have a calendar uh, for October. I know that October begins this coming weekend, but uh, blessedly, nobody has a birthday on October 1st. That wouldn't be on here. We do have some on October 2nd, but we'll leave those to next week. But we do have at least one birthday that I know of the last week of September, and he was silly enough to come to worship. And that's Brent. Am I right, Brent? Yes. This will be the first time we've ever sung Happy Birthday to Brent. And yours is on the 30th, am I right? Anybody else have a birthday this week that we've missed? All right, we're going to sing Happy Birthday, Dear Brent. All right? Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, dear Brentley. Happy Birthday to you. Many, many, many. And welcome here. I know we have at least one anniversary this week, and they share the day with Brentley's birthday. So my parents, how many years ago it be? 61. Top that, folks. Yeah. That's a long time. And we're going to sing. Yeah, let's do that. I myself am glad they got hitched. I really am. Uh, we're going to sing Happy Anniversary to Melissa and Kurt. Okay? Happy Anniversary to you. Happy Anniversary to you. Happy Anniversary to you. Happy Anniversary to you. things we have going on. I did tell you about the Emmaus. Uh, anyone that's part of the Emmaus community, there will be activities starting Thursday night and going through Sunday afternoon. If you need a reminder of what they are, because we haven't had an Emmaus walk in three years, please see us and we'll be talking with uh, Victor and Phil about getting down there and everything they need to do and everything that needs to happen. Uh, Casey and KC are also on the team with me. And it'll be a good time. Before that, Wednesday, we have our last meeting. You see the picture on the screen in blue, sharing the gospel with ease. It's been a really good discussion every single week. So glad this little book came out. Week 8, the final chapter. Read it. Be ready for it. Okay. Today is our last softball game, unless it's too mushy. I'm hoping that the fact that it stopped raining, that will be okay. Listen for a one call now or a text if it's canceled. If it's on... There'll be no text, there'll be no call. We'll just plan that it's on. But these fields, you know, sometimes they look good, but they don't, they're not safe. So right now we're planning to be on. Volleyball, you see next to softball, it starts October 4th or something like that, I think it is. Tuesday, October 4th. We'll get a schedule probably, hopefully this week, since it's a week and a half away. But there's more teams this year than we've had. I think Shelbyville Community Church has joined, and they've never played before, so... That'll be a good time, and uh, our team has done well and has had a good time for a while, so we'll be part of that again. Now, looking at the calendar of other things coming up, today we do have a board meeting, remember, stay after, you're on the board, you're an elder. Uh, next Sunday we have our Sunday school classes, 10 o'clock, we need more classes, more teachers to reach everybody in the entire church. Brother Fields will be preaching, because I'll be down at the Emmaus. So it's a good time to come and see someone different, someone new, and welcome him back. It's been a while. And then October 9th, uh, the day that we probably will have choir again, we have a ladies meeting after worship. Bring us out lunch. We're going to replenish our bead bracelets. So ladies, if you're part of wanting to do that, we've been giving them out so much that we only have a few back there. So. Some in the bag too? Okay. We still need to replenish, make more, so that's October 9th. We'll have some guests hmm? in the fellowship hall. They meet in the fellowship hall. October 16th, we have our last musical guest of the year coming, Alvarado Roadshow. We love them. They are ridiculous and a lot of fun, and they serve the Lord. October 23rd, we have Pastor Ephraim Goldstein coming, that is uh, ministering to Jews and Messianic Jews in Israel. And then on down the line, lots of things coming. 
The last thing I'm going to mention today, though, I've got a picture of another veteran. We've received probably seven or eight already of family members that have served as an, in the military. Please send me a picture of any of you all or any of your immediate family that served in any of the armed forces. Send me a picture, the name, and the years they served, and what branch. And we're going to put them in a song on Veterans Day. Any other announcements need to be made? Yes, sir. So it's hanging over the road. It's, it's on. It's on. It's on. Okay. Well, it wasn't here when I came through, so it's it's recent. So be careful if you're headed to Newcastle Way. It was there when I came. Okay, so you came not long after me, so. Was that on the left-hand side? Going back. Yeah, I was going back. Right. Yeah, I saw her. Yeah, I think you can see that you have to go around to the other lane. Yeah, yeah, come back. Be careful. Absolutely be careful. And it's kind of a little bit of a curve. Yeah. I'm going to go take care of that. There is a way to get it. It is six inches long. You're going to care. Thank you. All right, let's go on to our next song. Um, this is one of our choir songs we did, Be Thou My Vision. So if you remember it, the choir sang it just a couple months ago, and choir members sing loud and proud, and everybody else sing too. Let's stand up and sing. Be down my vision.
still have fellowship.
And I put this in the hands of one of our other new members this morning. If you never filled out one of these things, please let us be entertained by your silliness. So there's a stack of these back on the communion table. And it's a fun way to get to know each other. We did compile the ones that we've put together over the last couple of years in a book that's back there. So if I've drawn on too long, just go back there and get the book and read about who's got a favorite TV show and who likes this music, who likes that, and so on. Right now, as we get ready for Holy Communion, the choir is going to sing a song. Let me tell you the background of it. This is another ancient song, an old song, farther back than people know. But in the 1700s, in England, the song was resurrected and used by what were called nonconformist churches. These were churches that didn't want to be just simply the Church of England that did what the king or the queen said and basically was just a puppet for the politicians. The nonconformists wanted to look at the Bible, fancy that. They wanted to serve a risen Savior, so they were not going to conform. And this song that the choir is going to sing was their anthem. Now the song's been used again, and it was resurrected in the 60s and 70s, and then even the 90s it was in Sister Act. So if the choir could come on up, we're going to sing, Oh, Happy Day. That's right. Do it, Mo. All right, Mo, come on up. I like it. And our soloist today is Mo Racer. And we're missing uh, three of our choir ladies today, Barb, Jean, and Adrian, so I can make them.
And if we could have our servers come forward now.
members in the back, and folks online. We do have quite a few people that are out today that are watching online, and then some that are just guests watching online. If you want to send an offering or a tithe to the church, send it to Drennan Christian Church, P.O. Box 495, Newcastle, Kentucky, 40050. If you could, let's stand for the doxology, please. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Pray for more people 
to hear the gospel and to therefore believe. So I put those in a circle called evangelize. The next circle, the top right, says disciple. Now that's a, a noun and a verb, and I'm meaning it as a verb right now, to disciple people. It says commit to studying the Bible both at home and at church. If you are not in the Bible, you are probably not going to be in any capacity able to share with others and help them grow in the gospel if you're not in the gospels yourself. If you're not learning and growing about God, about Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, how are you going to impart that to someone else? It says under that mentor someone in their faith. We did a Bible study a couple of years ago called Mentor and a lot of the studies we've done and a lot of the discussions we've had have been about pouring yourself into someone else who doesn't know Jesus as well as you do because of your time, because of your experience, because of your age, and some of you do that. It's a joy when Harriet and I get text messages or hear about those of you all that are pouring into someone else. We don't have to be a part of that. Sometimes we are, but when we hear other people mentoring someone else in the church, that's a beautiful thing. It says, seek out strong relationships throughout the church family. I love seeing that. I love hearing about what well, we got together with them the other night. We ate dinner with them at their house. We know them outside the church. Call me. I'll talk to you later because it's a real relationship. It's not just a, hey, I'll see you in church and then I will not see you, talk to you, or think about you again until seven days from now. Real relationships. Under that it says, pour yourself into our youth. A glaring lack in our small body of Christ, our little church, is that for our kids, our teens, and our young adults, say our college age and 20s, we haven't had a whole lot to offer. Now, mostly that's because we don't have a whole lot of people. But we need to pray that we will have workers that roll up their sleeves. We don't have to be big to have people to say, you know what, I'll run herd on those youth. I'll make sure that the young adults have something to do in the name of Jesus. I'll make sure that our kids, even little squirts like that, know who Jesus is. Because I'll help. Under that it says, make sure you greet and get to know all of our visitors. If someone walks in the doors of this church, and goes out and nobody learned their name, shame on us. We can't do that. Now, I know that in the capacity Harry and I are in, we pretty much know everybody's name because that's what we're supposed to do. But when I hear anyone in this room say, you know, that, that guy, we shouldn't be like that. Seek people out. And under that it says, pray that we grow in depth. If we just pray that we grow in numbers that our pews are full, well, that's nice. Does that mean we're just going to make more professional churchgoers? Somebody who doesn't know a thing about a thing, they're just here. They don't understand why. Not growing. May not even enjoy themselves being here. They're wondering, why am I here? I know my name all went to church. So there's got to be something good about it, but I don't really get it. The bottom of the screen and the bottom of the page it says love and it says live in the order of joy, J-O-Y, Jesus first, others second, yourself third. Our culture teaches the opposite of that. Me first, me, I'm going to achieve, I'm going to be prosperous, I'm going to have the most money, the most prestige, the most fame, the best house, the best car, the best hair. Miss that boat big time. Put Jesus first. Focus on him, and then the second part comes a lot easier, focusing on others. And if you do that, then the focus on yourself will not seem to be such a need. You'll be so consumed with serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and therefore helping other people grow in him, that thoughts of yourself will dissipate a lot. And I don't mean in a bad way. I don't mean like you're neglecting yourself. I mean that You've got this because you've got Jesus and you're loving people because of Him. Under that it says, act the same inside and outside the church. I've said many times that I heard my dad say when I was a teenager about a certain man in the church I grew up. He said, yep, he's a Saturday sinner and a Sunday saint. And there's many ways to put that. Maybe some of us have lived that way. We see you out in Eminence or in Newcastle or in Bethlehem or Campbellsburg and we act completely different. 
than we do on Sunday morning at Drennan, that's not good. Because the community sees you that way. They'll be like, yeah, that guy, he's in church. I was with that guy last night. Let me tell you about his church. Okay. Under that it says, give sacrificially of your time, your money, and your heart where there is a need. Again, that comes back to the Jesus, others, and yourself. If you're giving of who you are, of your talent, of your resources, of your time, you are serving the Lord. You're not serving yourself. You're loving. And the bottom it says, pray that we show more love every day. Pray that our body of Christ, our church, is a loving church so that when people do walk in here, maybe at the end of their rope, I'm going to try church because nothing else works. And they come in and they see someone look down their nose at them. They'll be like, I knew it. I knew it. And they're out. Their salvation could hinge in the balance of you having a bad look on your face. Or me saying something snide or hateful from up there. We have to be loving. Now I've got a whole bunch there. There's a reason for it on the bottom left corner in a square. A rectangle says Drennan Christian Church Vision 2022-23. It's a plan. Now I want to go into the scripture that's at the bottom. We had some reading through it. Trisha led us through part of it this morning. Let's see if I can get my buttons to work. I think I'm going to need a new clicker. Every 10 or 12 years I need to buy a new clicker whether I need it or not, right? This was held together by tape. Let's see if I can make it work again. I've had to stop it about three times today. Yeah, there we go. So in the Great Commission, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Now, if I talk about evangelize, disciple, and love, here they are. For evangelize, look at that. Therefore, go. Telling us to go, get off our duffs and do it. And the part of evangelizing is baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Get them into the church. Get them into the faith. Find them. The next part, discipling, it says right there in it, make disciples of all nations. And teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. Just getting someone into the church is not the end. Too many times we teach that. We act like we get them into the water or Junior's Creek and that's it. Maybe they'll come back to church. Maybe they won't. They don't have to. It's magic water. You're saved by that water. It's kind of muddy to be magic. I don't know. <laughs> Get us into the church so that we can disciple them, teach them to obey Jesus and be more like Him. And speaking of more like Him, love. When Jesus is speaking at the beginning of the Great Commission, He says, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. So that means this is all in His hands. And if it's in His hands, the man who is love then it is love. For us to go out and make disciples of all nations, it is a loving choice. Now, the world will tell you right now you're a hater. You're trying to inflict your religion on someone else. No. Don't listen to that poppycock because that's what it is. You need to go and make disciples of all nations because we know the state of the world right now. We know what a dumpster fire it is. And at the end of the Great Commission, he comes back and reflects on himself again and he says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And when you hear that very end of the age part, I think about the fact of Revelation. And we know how the times will be. And Jesus is going to be there through the entire bit of it. It doesn't say that when I ascend to heaven, I'll see you all later. Good luck, pal. No, I'm going to be with you all the way to the end of the age. And right now, we're almost 2,000 years past when he did this. The work is not done. If the work was done, he would have already come back. We won't know. Remember that twinkling of an eye. That's when it's going to happen. Now I've got uh, a question I figured you might ask. What does this mean for me? Now if you're asking, what's Corey want about this vision? Well, to evangelize, always be looking to help folks find Jesus. You have to actively nurture them. If you are not looking for people to follow Jesus... I'm imploring you, I'm charging you today, right now, to start doing that. Some of you are doing that already. Some of you have been doing that for decades. Some of you it's been for a few years since you've started back in the church. Some of you it's a brand new thing because we're doing a Bible study the last two months about it. 
Some of you have been members of this church for a few months. Some of you in this room are not even members yet of this church, and I hope that you are, and I hope that you decide, you know, today's the day. The preacher's crazy and wild. I better do it before his head falls off. Yeah, do it. But you have to actively seek people. Now, to a disciple, it means always to pour yourself. And I'm saying that like an offering. Those are words of Paul, to pour himself into others so that they grow in Christ. You have to be growing as well. So for you to nurture someone to be a true disciple of Jesus, and Judy said it the other night at Wednesday night, saying to be like Jesus. That's what a disciple is. They're following Jesus. They want to be like him. It says for you to be able to do that for someone else, you have to be growing as well. So you cannot stagnate. Like I said earlier, you have to be reading the Bible. You have to be studying Several of you in this room right now taking notes, not because of great wisdom from me, but because that's who you are, and you want to be able to think and reflect and pray and remember what you're thinking about right now, to grow as a disciple of Christ so that you can help others grow. You know, the reason why we beg and plead for these folks to go on something like the Walk to Emmaus, which is just another retreat, there's plenty of them. This is one that we like. It's because we want these loved ones in our church to grow to be more like Him. If I hadn't gone on the Atlantis walk, I might not have grown in a way that I have. Hopefully I would have found someone somewhere else to grow. Marrying Harriet was probably the best part about being a disciple of Christ for me. Because I went from not knowing a whole lot. I was in church. But I didn't know a whole lot until I saw someone who was actively studying and growing and praying and wanting more of that relationship. Finally, to love, always act in the way you understand Jesus would act. You know, we have a ball game in four hours. When we go to that ball field, if it's, we're able to be on it, looks like it's sunny enough, hopefully it'll dry. If we act like baboons out there and act like we just want to win the game and score the most runs and not worry about we're playing against Frankelton today, if we don't consider them in our hearts and act like Jesus in front of them, then we're not being Christians at all. We're just out there playing ball. We just go join a beer league. There's plenty of them around. We have to act like Jesus would act all the time. The next thing I ask is, what does it mean for us as a church? Now, here's some results I see happening. And I believe these things. You may or you may not. Come along on the ride. As we evangelize, we will grow in numbers at a rate that we've not seen. Harriet and I and JR and Abigail have been here, my mom and dad, for 13 and a half years. I didn't mention Trace because... Well, you're getting close. About the same time, wasn't it? About the same time. So yeah, 13 and a half years. He was smaller than Wesley when we got here. That's right. Unbelievably cute. We're going to grow in numbers at a rate we've not seen. I believe that this time next year that we will average 100 in weekly worship. Last week we had 70. That was a big time. Now, we knew a lot of people that weren't going to be here today. We have 58. I didn't put it up on this, the thing yet, but Paula did tell me. If we evangelize, if we disciple, and if we show love in the community, I believe that we'll be doing that. And our county needs churches that are growing like that, not just Trinity. And there are churches of those numbers in Henry County. Not many. This could mean that eventually we would even need to add another worship service on Sunday mornings. If it gets to that point, this area holds a little over 100. If you've been to a wedding here, if you've been to Easter here, we can shoehorn in 110, maybe. 120 if we had to. But studies show that if you get to 80, 85% of your capacity, people get a little bit uncomfortable. So if we needed to have more time for church, we could have more time for church, a different service. As we disciple, now this is the big one for the depth, we will need to add more learning resources, including a weekly children's sermon. Now, I've been saying that lately. We need to have something so that Wesley, so that Victor, so that Franklin, so that Cambry, so that Avery, so that Colton, so that Caroline, so that all of our kids, Maisie, Kaylee's little sister, all the kids that come around here, even Brantley, who's getting so old, could be 10 next year, 
have something that is spoken directly into them by people that can bring it to their level. We need to have that back. It's been a long time since we have it regularly. It says we need to have more diverse classes on Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings. We have people <coughs> from all over the gamut. We have people that are beginners as Christians in the same room on Wednesday night as folks that have been Christian for 60, 70 years. Now, that doesn't mean that the one that's been a Christian for 60, 70 years has, knows more or has a better heart. No, it doesn't mean that. It means they have experience. We need to have opportunities for people that are, I got nothing, to be in a room for folks that got nothing. And we need opportunities for people that know plenty and want to go more on a deep dive to have those resources. So that on Wednesday night, we have 24 people in that uh, fellowship hall upstairs, which we did the other night. It's pretty crowded. It's pretty hot. If we had more classes, we could have more people talking. And it says there at the bottom, maybe even an evening service that would serve as a deep dive into tougher subjects at an advanced level. I was sent a video the other day by someone in this room from Genesis, and it went way, way, way deep into just one little section of the Bible that was too advanced and too um, almost, you could almost say out there to bring on a Sunday morning. Because people walking in and off the street would be like, oh my gosh, that's crazy stuff. It's so deep. It's so weird. Now some of you would be like, no, I, I kind of like that. But not everybody could. So if we needed to add something at a different time, maybe a Sunday night, maybe another time, for that advanced type teaching and learning, we could do it. And then finally, as we love, we'll need to flip the script in the community. Honestly. A lot of people in Henry County and around look at church folks as sticks in the mud. I'll use the H word, not that one. Hypocrite. Old fogies. Old fashioned. And if you look at the news and the social media now, hater, bigot, racist, these days, Christians and churches are getting a bad rap. Much of it deserved. Yep. We do deserve a lot. We need to be visible at community events. Yesterday was Eminence Day. A lot of you were there. We keep talking about we need to have a tent. We need to have a flow. We need to have these things where people are like, yeah, Drennan, man, they're okay. I kind of like those guys. They have fun. They love Jesus, and they're not weird much. <laughs> we need to be visible in community events and with local needs. There are people out there that are struggling and suffering, and you know it. And we need to have those resources. We have a few things we dabble in. Henry County Help Center, Awake Ministries. We had Amber Fuchs here last week who's a missionary. We need to do more things that are specific. And lastly, it says we need to look, sound, and act like Jesus every step of the way. If we don't remind people of Jesus... And what do we do? I've heard the phrase that if you're helping someone without sharing the gospel, you're just making them comfortable on their long journey to hell. Now that sounds terrible. But the gospel has to be in there. So those words about Jesus, that Bible, it needs to be in there. We don't need to beat it over people's heads because that is used as a weapon. Something very, very good turned into something evil. People do that. We can't we have to share the gospel every step of the way. So that's why I have that. Somebody told me yesterday, I was on the phone with them, they said, I love how that's on the back of your softball shirts. Because I want, even when we go play ball and act really goofy, <laughs> bless you, sweaty and muddy and dirty and smell bad, I want people to see us as we round the bases welcoming others evangelize into a life of Christ disciple with open loving arms love if all of us that call this their church home buy into that things are going to take off in the way they have it. it's been gearing toward this now, my retiring this year is not an accident. I've felt for a long time that 2022 would be the year that I would leave school after 27 years and retire. Because you can do that in Kentucky. 
It's better to stay 30, get more de narrow. The time's too short, and I wanted to be here. We've grown during COVID gently and grown this year after most of that's gone, although most of us have had it this year when it's calmed down, but anyway. But with us here more now, with a lot of you that have come into the church out of nowhere, some of your answers of prayers, you really are. Some of you are the answer to a prayer specific about something we need in this church. Our growth is going to go like that. But if we sit on our hands, if we don't pray, if we don't stay in Scripture, if we don't get to know one another, if we don't show love in the community and inside these walls, then we will stagnate. We might have 58 people that I didn't put up. We might have 70 that we had last week, but do we want to just plateau? Now, I don't want this to be a church of 300. Miss Eleanor, God rest her soul, said that in the 1920s or 30s, they had over 300 on the roll. And that roll is right back there behind George. That's true, I looked at it, I counted them, because she put numbers next to them. In the 1920s and 30s, this was the biggest church in Henry County. It's been a long time. And I'm not saying we should be the biggest church in Henry County at all. It's not about that. We need to have more people in our pews because we want more people to go up when Jesus calls to us with his trumpet in the sky. We don't want to have people left sitting in the pews, or even worse, empty pews that there's no activity going on at all. We need to have as many people as possible so when he sounds that horn, there's major movement going up there. And that way, we know that the people we've poured into, especially our youngins, we have them squared away so that when they're adults, they'll be squaring away their kids and their grandkids. Are you ready? I hope you are. I don't want you to sit on your hands. If you do, it's not going to happen. If it's left to me and Harriet, it's not going to happen. Now, we're going to try our darndest. In fact, I'm just still now Start to get used to this retirement idea and starting to see what we can do now that I don't have to go to Crestwood all day. Are you ready? We're going to right now sing our hymn, He Lives. This is an Easter hymn. We were going to sing it last week, but we had a wonderful testimony Adrian shared with us, and we ended up singing Ronnie Nelson, which suited me just fine. But today we're going to sing an Easter hymn. Let's stand together. This is a hymn of invitation. If you've never made your claim at Drennan and said, we're part of that church, by golly, and we're going to be a member there, we're going to go on this journey, we're going to get 100 people in those pews because that's what they built when Abe Lincoln was president. These are the old pews, but just remember the inmates capped them about 20 years ago. Underneath here, Civil War pews. They built this many. Let's fill them up. Come on down on the invitation. We're going to sing all the verses. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today.
meeting, but we do have to we talk. We just need to know what time. Uh, yeah. Okay.